Hello, this is Ron Henderson, Multi Real Estate Services, and in today's blog, we're basically going to give you a little peek behind the curtain and give you an overview on how your FICO score, loan to value, if you're dealing with a condo and other variables, affects your interest rates and costs in getting real estate financing. Face it, you hear on the radio and see on television that interest rates are super low, but the reality can be quite different. Don't take me wrong, interest rates are low. But because of your specific scenario, you may still qualify for the loan, but because of the adjustments or add-ons, you may be looking at quite a different animal than what you figured on. The adjustments I'm talking about isn't because some loan broker is trying to rip you off. This has to do with the secondary money market and the government's perception of risk. Each adjustment may be minor or very substantial, and it isn't unique to mortgage brokers working from the wholesale side, but also any bank or lender that is also uh, selling loans on the retail side. Let's start off with a little disclosure. The following adjustment matrix is based on one wholesale mortgage lender's criteria on February 7, 2011. Due to economic conditions, government regulation changes, and perceived risk, underwriting guidelines and interest rate adjustment criteria is a moving target. Let's first look over some of these adjustments, and then we're going to go over a couple of theoretical scenarios to see how this all adds up. Escrow waiver. That's basically an impound account where the lender is going to maintain a separate account for your property taxes and home insurance policy and make the payments for you. If you don't want the lender babysitting you on this, it's going to cost you a fraction of a point. Uh, geographic adjustments. This particular lender isn't hitting California for any kind of adjustment, but some lenders do. And uh, credit scoring. Here's a good one for you. You can see where if you have a high FICO score and low loan to value, they're going to treat you really well. In, fit, in this case, they're going to go ahead and give you actually a little bit, 0.35 of a point back. They're actually going to give you a little better rate than they would otherwise. Now, if you go low scoring, say 659, and then with a high loan to value of, say, 95, slightly over 95%, they're going to nail you for over five points. That's a lot. Now, it's cash out, they're going to nail you again, and this is all accumulative, remember. If you're a low loan to value and you want to pull cash out, if you want to go uh, higher than 80% loan to value, you can be looking at another three points. Property type does have an effect. Single family dwelling, owner occupied, not a big deal. Start getting into condos, and this particular lender, they're going to hit you for three quarters of a point if it's over 75% loan to value. But the, most lenders right now are giving some kind of add-on, even more than that, across the full spectrum of the loan-to-value because of the higher risk factors because of the HOAs. A lot of them have uh, major financial issues right now. Also, if you have multiple units, two units, they hit you for a point, uh, three to four units, you're looking at a point and a half if you're owner-occupied. If it's not owner-occupied, another two and a quarter points. Subordinate financing is basically when you have a second trust deed behind the first. Right now, we're just dealing with the first TD. Now... The FICO score and the loan to value and the CLTV, the combined loan to value, has an effect. You can see how as the combined loan to value goes up, they're going to hit you additional, say, at a higher than 95% loan to value, if the lender will even do it. Again, we're, we're not even bringing into account the underwriting guidelines, just the point structure. They're going to hit you for another one and a half points if you're higher than 95%. Combined loan to value with the second and the first and lower than 720 uh, FICO score. Here you can see that the loan amount will have a slight effect on the point structure. Where you're really going to see an effect is on the different loan programs that are applicable to the higher uh, principal amounts. We're not even going to get into that right now. Down here we can see that the non-owner occupied aspect of a property or as a second home does have an effect. Uh, when you're non-owner occupied, single family dwelling, under 75% loan to value, they hit you for two more points. If you're between 75 and 80%, then they're going to hit you for three and a quarter points. Now, we're not going to get too much into mortgage insurance, but uh, there is private mortgage insurance. This particular lender has the capability to insure internally any loan that's over 80% loan to value. If it's going to be sold on the secondary money market, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, etc., then they, it has to have some type of insurance. And here you can just see that the annual adjustment, the upfront MI, and the monthly factor does increase with the uh, higher loan to value. Now let's see how things add up with two different scenarios. These are going to be two different borrowers, two different properties, but based on the same basic loan criteria. Uh, conforming 30-year fixed, good old standard uh, cookie cutter loan, cash out, 
$400,000 loan amount, so it's still Freddie and Fannie, 80% loan to value. And the adjustments that we're going to have to evaluate is the property type, the FICO score, the cash out add-on. They're going to be both cash out and the loan amount adjustment. Now, this first borrower, he's clean. He's got a standard good old single-family dwelling. He's got a high FICO of 750 So because it's a uh, cash-out scenario, he's going to have an add-on of about two-tenths. Being an, a cash-out, he's going to have a half a point add and just a, a minimal addition for the uh, loan amount. So it gives him about $1,000 or about a quarter point add compared to if it was a perfect scenario. Now this next guy, he's in a whole different position. He's a condo, low FICO, high loan to value, cash out. That's a high risk loan as far as the secondary money market's concerned. So he's got a three quarter point ad for being a condo. And then he got three and three eighths addition because of the low FICO and another two and a quarter add on because it's cash out, high FICO. So it's six and a half point total. And against that $400,000 loan amount, He's got about $25,000 more than if it was a perfect scenario, just in costs. Now, how are all these costs going to be handled? Number one, you can come in at closing with a bunch of cash. That's kind of brutal, but I've seen it done. You can include it in the loan amount, but you have to have the leverage on the loan to value to be able to go ahead and pop that in there. Or you could take a higher interest rate and pay it through lender rebates. I'm going to show you how that's done. Or you can pay it through a combination. Now here's something you don't see every day. This is the loan matrix that I'm looking at from the wholesale side for the 30 year loan product correlating with that point in time with that specific lender. Now don't get overly eager with those interest rates because uh, I could have three rate changes in one day depending on market conditions. Bottom line is the longer the lock period, the higher the point structure. Also same thing with the interest rates. If you wanna buy down the interest rate, it's gonna cost more money. At that point in time, uh, Four and three quarter percent was basically par. That's basically the point of equilibrium with the point structure. Now, if we wanted to go with a lower interest rate, say to four and a quarter, it would cost for a 30 day lock about three and a half points more on top of all the additional costs. And likewise, if we went with the four, uh, excuse me, five and a half percent interest rate on a 30 day lock, that gives us what they call a rebate of a little over three points. And that's money coming back from the institution, giving the loan because of the higher rate structure. And we'll probably need some of that, especially with uh, some of those higher loan costs on that one loan scenario. Okay, let's look at a little bit more math here. Scenario number one was, remember, our clean scenario. Uh, real high FICO, single family dwelling. Uh, so we only had to offset about $1,000 in adjustments. So using a 30-day lock, Based on the four and seven eighths interest rate, it gives us almost a one point rebate, 0.92. So that one point rebate, based on the $400,000 loan amount, gives us a little over 3,600 bucks to work with. Okay, and so now we have to offset that $1,000. That gives us a positive of about $2,600. Now we can use that to go ahead and pay off some of the other closing costs or we can go with a lower interest rate and not deal with that rebate and we can go ahead and cover some of those costs into the loan amount or in cash at the uh, at the closing. Now scenario number two, remember that was more brutal. Now we had to offset over $25,000 in adjustments because that was a condo cash out low FICO score, high risk loan. So what we're going to do is use that 30 day lock but we have to kick up the interest rate to 5.5% to get that little over three-point rebate. Now, that's going to give us about $12,000 to work with, but we still have to offset $25,000 in adjustments. So we still have to come in with over thirteen dollars in cash to be able to close the transaction. Now, is that going to be worth it? Well, you know, I, I've seen it. I, I know that sometimes people need to cash out. They have the loan to value leverage and they can still go ahead and incorporate it into the loan amount. Who knows? The bottom line is many times, even with great interest rates out there, the scenario and the adjustments will essentially blow out the possibility of doing a refi. Well, hopefully you got something out of all that. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the closing costs have gone up from where they were back a couple years ago, and they're going to continue to go up over the next, at least next year to two years. 
Uh, a lot of uh, Freddie and Fannie guidelines have been changing. FHA, they've changed theirs. And the secondary money market, they see a lot more risk in uh, loan product. And so unfortunately, uh, it is what it is. And also, every lender has a slight deviation on some of that matrix. And so uh, being a mortgage broker, that's where it comes in advantageous to be able to go ahead and uh, evaluate different lenders and see who's uh, got the best product for a specific scenario. But if you're in the Los Angeles region and have any specific questions, you can always contact me through my website, MRES.com. Till next time, take care.